can you run when you don't know the way of the Spirit? Oak House Church brings to you the word of life which is able to build you up and offer you an inheritance among all those that are sanctified. Sit back and listen, and may your life become more like that of Christ as you encounter His Word. God bless you. We are clapping for Jesus. He is the one that deserves all the hand clap, all the adoration, all the praise for what He has done. Hallelujah. You are welcome to Night of Power. If you are in the physical audience, you are welcome. If you are online, you are welcome. You recognize that you're there. And you have to understand, if you're online, there is no distance in the realm of the spirit. Meaning, if you will connect and concentrate, the power of God will hit you right where you are. Hallelujah. Actually, Jesus has already started working. You can't force him to touch you at the beginning, at the middle, or at the end. He has already started walking. He has already started touching a few people in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You're welcome again. We're looking at raw power. I want you to understand something about raw power. It is not a message. Raw power is not a message. It is an experience that you are going to experience today. Hallelujah. So we're not here to preach a fancy message. We're here so that you can experience the power of God. That's what tonight is all about. That's what Apostle Paul was trying to communicate. That an integral or a critical part of Christianity, it goes beyond words. It goes beyond fancy preaching. It goes beyond persuasive words. When you are talking about Christianity, the full block of Christianity, there is a part of it, a major part of it, that has to do with power. Hallelujah. And so in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4, maybe we should start from that scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. I, I, will, I like the way NIV puts it, so we're going to begin to read there. And I also want to let you know that beyond the people you can see, they are the ones you cannot see. Primarily, the person that is here is the Holy Spirit. Tonight is his night. So you are going to stop walking up and down. Even if you are serving, we appreciate your service. You have to stop moving about. Except you're just entering the auditorium. You enter very quietly and you sit down. There are more people you cannot see than the ones you can see. And they are all over this auditorium. The Holy Spirit is here. The angels are here. Hallelujah. So we're not going to do anything that will grieve the Holy Spirit in this meeting. Amen. So like I said, we're discussing raw power. See the scripture? It says, my message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit and power. So when we're discussing raw power, we're not talking about coming to preach a powerful message. It's beyond that. We're talking about coming to demonstrate the power of God. That's what Christianity is all about. That's why in that same 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2, Paul was also talking about the same thing. Actually, if we move to verse 20, he said the same thing. He said the kingdom of God is not about talk. Especially if you read from the NIV version. He said the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk. There are so many talkers. He said, when you're talking about the kingdom of God, you are not discussing too much talk. He said, it's not all about talk, 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 talk. He said, the kingdom of God is about power, not just about talk. I like the way um, King James puts it. He says, for the kingdom of God is not in word, is in word, it is in power. And that is what tonight is all about. Hallelujah. And so, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5, the same thing. Paul, in different places he went, and I can keep giving the scripture back to back to back to back. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5, the same thing. He said, when we are bringing the gospel, we didn't just bring the gospel in, in form of words. He said, we brought the gospel also in the power of God. That's what Christianity is all about. There is a part of showing the scripture. But something that differentiates Christianity from any other thing is the power.
power, the demonstration of the power of God. And so that is why I like my job tonight. My assignment is very simple. Very, very simple. That's why I'm very happy today. He gave me a simple assignment. What is my assignment today? Very simple. Introduce you to the power of God and simply step aside and allow Jesus to act. So that's why I said my job is simple. I'll just introduce you to the power of God, explain to you a little bit about it, and you see me move aside so that the one in charge will act. His name is Jesus. But when he acts, he actually acts through the person called the Holy Spirit. He's going to be acting, he's going to be touching, he's going to be doing a lot of things in your life, and he's going to be acting through the person of the Holy Spirit. I think I'm going to demonstrate that so that you will understand what is going on. If I have some scarves there, let me use it to show you an example. And three people, maybe three people from the choir, just help me. Any scarf, any material is good. One, two, three, quick. So that I'm going to do it so that you'll be able to understand what's going on. I like to do what pictures here. Please just stand here. So we have God the Father, God the Son. Give me any of the scarves. Who is Jesus Christ? God the Father, Jesus, the Holy Ghost. Give it to him. Jesus so I'm trying to demonstrate so you understand what's going to happen tonight. All the scars go to Jesus. Jesus is the one in the middle, so give him everything. Okay. So when you come to pray, so let me discuss who they are. This is God the Father. This is the one in the middle is God the Son. This is Jesus Christ. And the one on the left is just that you are wearing black. And it's supposed to be the Holy Spirit. Please, help us. When we are discussing Satan, you are not Satan, but you will come out. But you are not Satan in any shape and form. Okay, so this is God the Father. This is Jesus Christ. And this is the Holy Spirit. This is what happens. When you pray, you're not praying to Jesus. You're not praying to the Holy Spirit. You can talk to Jesus because he's your friend, he's your redeemer. You can talk to the Holy Spirit, but the Bible tells us in John chapter 16, verse 23, he said, the person you're going to talk to is God the Father. You make your request to him. He said, you shall, in that day, when that time comes, he said, you will no more talk to me, Jesus. He was talking to the disciples. He said, you won't talk to me. You won't make your request to me anymore. He said, you are going to make your request to the Father. Now, when you talk to the Father, he will not listen to you except you come in the name of Jesus Christ. So for those who are approaching the Father without the name of Jesus, he will not answer you, he will not talk to you, he will not pay attention to you. If you want the ears of God to open, you have to talk to him in the name of Jesus. You go to the Father, you make your request to the Father using the name of Jesus. The moment you use the name of Jesus, the first thing he does is that he opens the ear of God and God can hear your request. Now... God the Father has given Jesus everything. So in his hands, lift one of the scarves. In his hands has healing. In his hands has deliverance. In his hands has prosperity. In his hands has breakthrough. Breakthrough, whatever it is that you need. Whatever you need in this life, it is with Jesus. Now when you talk to the Father and say, Lord, I need healing, I need deliverance, whatever it is that you need. Jesus is the one that is going to act. But when Jesus also acts, he doesn't move by himself. He acts through the person of the Holy Spirit. So the one that actually carries the power of Jesus is the Holy Ghost. So somebody comes to the Holy to Father and asks. He goes to Jesus and says, Jesus, take this thing. He hands it over to the person called the Holy Spirit. So the person that is going to be touching you today is who? The Holy Spirit. However, everything, maybe we should take a look at the scripture so it's not that we are guessing. Let's take a look at John chapter 16 verse 14. It's important you understand this so that you see what is going on behind the scene. John chapter 16 verse 14. He says, he will bring glory to me by taking what is mine. Jesus is the one speaking here. He said, by taking what is mine and making it known to you. If we have NIV, we can look at the NIV version of that scripture. He said, he will glorify me. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. So the Bible is saying that tonight Jesus is going to receive glory. But how is he going to do it? He will take the things that are from Jesus. So Jesus hand to the Holy Ghost. Is there somebody that needs one more person? Okay, yes, you that were in black. This is a good time for you. 
So you need a healing. You need a touch from God. You need revival. You need breakthrough. You need prosperity. You've talked to the Father tonight in the name of Jesus. But the person that is going to ask, because I'm going to step out of the way, I'm just going to release, ask him, it's time for you to do your job. So the person that, the, that is going to act is who? So Holy Spirit, he needs a healing, so please touch him. He's giving healing. What else do you need? He said prosperity. Okay, that's not bad. What else do you need? Divine health. What else do you need? Knowledge. You're giving it to him. Whatever it is that you need, the Holy Spirit is going to act this evening. He is the one going to take the things that are from Jesus and is going to act and do whatever it is that you need. He's going to do it in your life. Now, concerning this Jesus, this Holy Spirit, Jesus, Father and Son, you can sit down because I want to discuss what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit. So, Holy Spirit, please come here. You're acting as the Holy Ghost. So, do you know that this Jesus, you can sit as powerful as Jesus was, Jesus made some comments about the Holy Spirit. And those comments were a little bit startling. What did he say about the Holy Spirit? He said, you know what? It is better for you that I go. He said, it is better for you that when I go, there is somebody that is going to come. His name is the Holy Spirit. And the disciples were baffled. How can you say, it is to my benefit, it is to my advantage, that you, Jesus, you go. And then it is better for the Holy Spirit to be there. How is it even possible? But Jesus said, I'm telling you the truth. It is to your advantage. It is better that I go to the Father. Why do I need to go to the Father? Because I need to go there and represent you. The reason is because the Bible tells us that morning and night, that the devil comes to bring accusation. Meaning that every morning and night, the devil goes to report you to God. He goes to remind God, you did this, you did this, you did this. That's what the devil does. So Jesus was telling them, he said, it's better for me to go to the Father and go and represent you there. He said, but it is to your benefit that the Holy Spirit stays here. They said, how come? Do you know why Jesus made that statement? Because Jesus knew from experience what can happen to a man that the Holy Spirit has come in contact with. He knew from experience. As a master of fact, when Jesus was walking as a man, he had to depend on the Holy Spirit. Remember that when he came to planet Earth, he didn't come as God Almighty. He came as a normal man. The way you are is the way Jesus was. The only thing that made him different was this Holy Spirit. John chapter 14 verse 10. Let's take a look at it. Holy Spirit, the person acting as Holy Spirit, please sit. Let's look at John chapter 14 verse 10. When Jesus was talking to us about his dependence on the Holy Spirit, he said, don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? Now pay attention to the next two lines. He said, the words I speak are not my own. He said, but the Father who lives in me, he is the one doing the works. In other words, he was discussing the Holy Spirit. He said, the one that is living inside of me, his name is the Holy Spirit. He said, he's the one doing the work. All the healing all the multiplication of bread, all the walking on water, every single thing you see Jesus doing. Jesus was saying, I have to depend on the Holy Spirit. It is this Holy Spirit. I was filled with his power. And that's why you see demons crying out. And that's why you see the sick being healed. That's why you see leprosy going. All of those things. He said, it is because of one person. His name is the Holy Spirit. So Jesus was telling them from experience. You need the Holy Spirit, not just for him to stand beside you. You need him inside you because he was inside me. And that's why you see all the wonderful things in my ministry. That means the success of Jesus is because of the person of the Holy Spirit. And then Jesus went further, he told them something. He said, the moment you come in contact with this person called the Holy Spirit, the moment he begins to act, the very first thing that you will notice that will happen to you is that you will receive raw power. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Jesus said, you will receive power after the Holy Ghost has come on you. He says something will happen to you the moment you come in contact with this man. The Bible says, Acts chapter 1 verse 8. He said, you shall receive 
raw power. Why is it raw power? It is from heaven and it is undiluted. It is the real dynamic power that can raise the dead. It's the real dynamic. Somebody on my right just got a healing in your ear. I think there's something wrong with your ear. There's something on my right hand side, if I'm not mistaken. But somebody just got a healing in your ear. Someone just got a healing in your ear. If you came in here, and I think it's one of your ears, actually, not the two of them. I think it's one of your ears. Someone just got a healing. That's the Holy Ghost. I've not even stepped aside yet. He's already moving. Somebody on my right just got a healing in your ear. If you had an ear condition, if you had a problem with your ear, the ushers around you would help you check. You will notice that that part has just popped open. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for what you are doing. We honor you and give you praise. We're going to take the testimony shortly because we're going to minister to everybody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Mm. Oh, we give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. He said, the moment you come in contact with him, he said, you are going to receive power. And that is why Jesus advised the disciples from a place of experience. He said, listen to me. In Luke 24, 49, he said, listen to me. He said, don't go anywhere unless you are endued with raw power. He said, don't go out. You are at risk if you step out without power. So he told the disciples, remain in hiding. Don't go out. Go to the upper room. Stay there. Lock the doors. Don't go anywhere. Don't try to go to work. Don't try to go to the market. Don't try to go anywhere. Wait until something that is not from this planet Earth happens to you. Luke 24, I think we'll read verse 49. I, if, if I wish would have the um, living Bible translation, but if not, this is fine. He said, and I will receive, and I will send the Holy Spirit just as my father promised. He said, but stay here in the city until what happens. Can we read the last line together? Until what happens? The Holy Ghost comes and fills you with what? Fills you with what? Fills you with what? No, you didn't get it right. Fills you with what? No, you didn't get it right. Fills you with what? Fills you with what? Fills you with what? Raw power. Why did I call it raw power? Because that power can change the life of a man. A man, a woman, or man, whoever, is a prostitute. An arm robber, a killer, a drug addict. When raw power comes in contact with that person, that man changes. This was a man called Apostle. We call him Apostle Paul. But if you had seen him then, before he came in contact with this power from heaven. Living Translation say, wait until power from heaven comes in contact with you. Why do I like calling it raw power? Because it means the power is undiluted. It's not the one that comes from a man. That's why in, at some point, I need to step aside and allow the undiluted power to begin to touch me. He said, wait. Don't go anywhere. He said, you are at risk without power. You can't step into life without power. That is why when Jesus came on planet Earth, the Bible says he was introduced to the planet Earth by power, not by any other thing. Romans chapter 1 verse 4. Because he understood you can't go anywhere. Me, my own introduction, that's what Jesus was saying. My introduction into this life is by power. Romans 1, 4. He said, and he was shown to be the son of God when he was raised from the dead by what? By the power of the spirit. The way they showed him to be the son of God is how? By the power of the spirit. Can we look at it? In the King James Version of this, I think that captures it better. The King James Version of Romans chapter 1 verse 4. You see what the Bible says there? And he said he was declared to be the son of God according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection with power according to the spirit of holiness. So the Bible said he was declared to be the son of God with what? Power. In other words, he was introduced to us by what? By the spirit of power. That's how Jesus was introduced to us. So Jesus was saying, me, to walk on this earth, I needed power. I needed something to come on my life. It is called the power from heaven. It is called the power from on high. And he told the disciples, you have many things to do, I agree. 
You have a job to go to, I agree. But you can't go. If not, you'll be a victim. Meaning what? <laughs> if you don't understand the language of power, you will be a victim to the man that understands the language of power. You'll be a victim. There's only one language that this earth hears and understands. It is called the language of power. Hallelujah. Why did Jesus tell them it was important to come in contact with power? Because Jesus understood how this world is structured. Number one, Jesus understood. He said that this world is full of darkness. Isaiah chapter 60. And every day is getting darker and darker and darker. And the only way you can survive is through power. Isaiah chapter 60. He said, for behold, darkness shall cover the earth. And every day is increasing. If you take a look at Nigeria, now I'm only using Nigeria because that's where we are physically. But this is going on over the world. Many years ago, maybe something about 15 years ago, there was nothing like kidnapping. In fact, somebody was making a joke to me many years ago when I was in school, university, and she said, do you know why there's no kidnapping in Nigeria? I said, no. She said, because they know if they kidnap somebody in Nigeria, nobody will answer you. It means they, they will say, if you kidnap your brother, say, take him, be feeding him. That's why they don't kidnap anybody. And we laughed. That's how I remember that 15 years ago, there was no kidnapping at all. When it got to 10 years ago, kidnapping started. But it wasn't just random people. It was only people that were wealthy. People that were well off. They are the ones you kidnap. So, I mean, if you don't have a lot of money, you won't care because you're not a target. But as the days began to progress, you notice they are not only kidnapping rich people. They are kidnapping just about everybody. I had a, a ransom. They are asking for 100,000 naira ransom. So, those kidnappers are actually hungry. Some are even asking for a bag of rice to so let you go. So, what it means is that every day, darkness is increasing. Every day, crime is increasing and it's getting worse. I was reading newspaper the other day. It was in newspaper and I think I was watching something or reading whatever. They said they caught a man not too far away. They said somewhere around stadium. And he had 100 used diapers. You know what that means? Baby's diapers are used. They saw him. The man had an accident, and so the uh, whatever the security were trying to help him out of the car, and they noticed he had a bag inside the bag. Hundred used diapers. Is it that the man has hundred children, or where exactly was he going to? Your guess is as good as mine. So Jesus understood darkness is coming, gross darkness, and is increasing on a daily basis. And that is why you become a victim if you don't understand the language of power. And that is why Jesus told them, he said, wait until you come in contact with the Holy Ghost. Until you come in contact with him. Don't go anywhere. You are at risk. Because the men that understand power, they will put you under. Also, if you read the Bible in 1 John chapter 5, I believe it's verse 18, you see what Jesus was talking there about what's happening in the whole world. This is how the world is structured. That's why you need power. First John 5, 18. He said, we know that God's children do not make a practice of sin. He said, for God's son holds them securely and what the evil one cannot touch them. Let's read the next verse. Verse 19. We said, we know that we are children of God and what? The world around us is what? Under the control of the evil one. So what's happening here is the Bible is telling us that all the evil that happens in the world is under the control of someone. There is someone that is causing the evil. There is someone that is causing the sickness. There is someone that is causing the kidnap. There is someone that is causing the sudden death. There is someone that is causing the stagnation. The Bible says, and it is everywhere around us. That's why Jesus said, you must understand the language of power. If you don't understand it, you are in trouble. Even look at it physically speaking. Anybody who is going to go far in life must have a type of power. Anybody that has moved far in life, he has a type of power. You look at it. It is either the person has intellectual power, he's very smart. People like maybe Wale Shoin and a few other people, what they have is intellectual power. They are not popular because they have money. They are popular because of what? Intellectual power. 
And then you see some other people, they may not be very smart, but then they have financial power. And so you know about them because they have financial power. If you don't have a form of power, you are nobody. Even in the physical, forget the spiritual. Just in the physical. There are some people, their power is their beauty. So you see some people, because they are very beautiful, they are known. You see some people, they have social power. They have influence. And so they are known. So if there is no power that you have in the physical, you are in nobody. You will not be recognized anywhere. I'm talking about physical, not even spiritual. But let me tell you the truth. You see all these powers I've mentioned, whether it's financial, whether it's uh, um, political, whatever kind of power, they are all useless in the face of spiritual power. Why? A man that has spiritual power will liquidate you with all your money. A man that has spiritual power will liquidate you with all your intelligence, all your intellect. That is why someone can be a brother. I was watching a TV program, some, maybe I can't remember how long ago. They showed a man, maybe you've seen him, maybe you saw it, I don't know. He was sweeping, if you know Lagos Ibadan Expressway, he was sweeping Lagos Ibadan Way. That's the express road. He was sweeping it. And so the news people thought this was interesting. So they stopped and asked him a question. I thought when they were showing him, you know how before they interviewed the man, they were showing him, he was sweeping the floor. You know, he was very serious sweeping the floor. So me, I thought he was a mad person. And then to my greatest surprise, the man, when they were talking to him, he was speaking Queen's English. Perfect English. He was speaking Fone. They asked him, sir, why are you sweeping the floor? He said, you know what? I lived in UK all my life. He was still speaking Fone. He said, I lived in UK all my life. And when I was there, I realized, you know what? Nigeria is really dirty. And I had to come down to rescue Nigeria. And they said, so to rescue Nigeria is to sweep Lego. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to keep the express road clean. <laughs> he has been called home by somebody that has spiritual power in the negative. He's abroad. Somebody sat down on a shrine and called, I don't know what his name, let's say his name is uh, Ogogo. Ogogo! Most likely, is one illiterate in the village. Ogogo! Come back to Nigeria! Come back to Nigeria! And all of a sudden, he enters the man's heart. I have to go to Nigeria and sweep the express. I have to go to Nigeria and sweep the express. And he comes back to Nigeria. Phonest speaking man. But his intelligence that he's far away did not help him because he didn't understand the language of power. So somebody that understands the language of power put him in that kind of bondage as a madman, though he was very smart. Perfect English. And the funny thing is that his phonetics did not change. With the madness in his life, the phonetics did not change. Now, his own might be extreme, but there are people that are in serious bondage because they don't understand the language of power. There are two types of power in operation, the Bible tells us. We're going to look at the two of them, and then I'm going to show you something, and then step out of the way and allow the Holy Spirit to begin to move. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know why I said the spiritual power supersedes whatever? It doesn't matter the kind of power you have. Whether it's financial, intellectual, you went to school, all of that. There are people that are so rich, but they climb. After some time, some force pulls them down. One day, one of my daughters, only she was telling me something. She said, ah, do you know you are richer than Dangote? I said, me, how am I richer than Dangote for goodness? Do you know how much Dangote has? Do you know how much I have? She said, yes. He said, you are richer than him. I said, how? She said, because you have something he doesn't have. What was she talking about? He said, you have raw power. You have spiritual power because you are connected to Jesus. He said, all he has is financial power. If he has any other type of power, it might be spiritual power. But he said, as long as that power is not the power of Jesus Christ, it is subject to the power of Jesus Christ. Two types of power. So what's happening is that the two types of power, it is either you connect to one of these two types. If you don't connect to one of these two types, I'm telling you that you're a victim. You need rescue. And tonight, the Holy Ghost has come on a rescue mission. I'm going to show you. Two types of power. Colossians 1.13. Yeah. We're going to read it from the NLT version, and I also like us to read it from the King James version, the two scriptures the two of them. For he, he there is Jesus Christ. So they're about to show you the two sources, the two 
kingdoms, actually, let me tell you the truth. There's only one source of power, but one of them is corrupted, but all power comes from God. The second power is not corrupted. One is real, the other one is corrupted. The one from Satan is corrupted, the other one is real. But see what the Bible says. He said, for, for there, because he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. What this tells me is that there are people that need to be rescued. You read from King James. He said he had delivered us. Let's look at King James. Say for he had delivered us from the powers of darkness. Meaning what? There are powers of darkness and the Bible said that there are people that need to be delivered. And there are people that need to be rescued. I'm going to show you about 30 signs to show that you need rescue. You might be a fine girl, but you need rescue. You might be a tall that can have some man, but you need rescue. What does it mean a person is rescued? Let me give you an example again. Two guys come. Then I'll show you signs to let you know you need rescue. So, who, who needs rescue? You need rescue because you're the shorter person. So can you demonstrate to me why this man would need rescue, the taller person? You people need to join drama department. You would have known. <laughs> so just hold him, that's what it means. Down. You are too kind, though. Ah, uh -uh, they're even hugging each other. No. <laughs> Doesn't mean he needs, Satan is carrying him. He's good now. No, pin him down. This is what's happening. The Bible said that there are people, so just pin him down. The smaller one kneel down, uh, Jojo. So this one, what does this mean? There are people that are like this. That's what the Bible is saying. He said, who has delivered us from the powers of darkness? Meaning what? There are people that are under the control of powers. And it's on the power of God. There are people that are under the control of the power of darkness. The Bible says, who is this wearing white? Come. He says they need rescue. So this one's going to happen to somebody tonight. So this one's going to happen. This guy comes to rescue. Three of you see that. So the Bible said that there are people that need deliverance. There are people that need to be rescued. Do you know that some people need rescue, but they don't know? Some people need to be rescued from the powers of darkness, but they don't know at all. So I'm going to show you a couple of signs for you to know. I have about 30 of them, but I don't think I can go through all of them. I'll, I'll mention as many of them as I can. And then, if you need help, the Spirit of God is going to begin to talk to you. Like I said, my job tonight, simple, introduce you to the power of God and simply step out of the way. Hallelujah. So the first sign that you need rescue is that you are not born again. If you have not received Jesus into your heart, you need rescue. Let me tell you why you need rescue. What it means is that right now, your name is in a register. And the title of that register, on top of that register, they wrote people in the kingdom of darkness. You might not know. You might even have a good job. You might even be speaking well. You might be doing all those things. But as long as you have not received Jesus into your heart, the Bible says that you are under the control of darkness. You are under the influence of darkness. And Jesus came today to do a rescue mission. That the first group of people that need rescue, the first group of people that need deliverance, what it means if you have not received Jesus into your heart, what it means that you'll be a victim. You don't even have power. What it means is that somebody in that same kingdom that is higher than you spiritually can sit down and decide you will never have a child in this life. And if you like, go to all the doctors on planet Earth, you can never have a child. The person can decide you will never have a job. If you like, go to all the schools, do first class, have Harvard, you will never have a job. Why? Because you are in that kingdom, you need rescue. You don't even know you need rescue. So if you are not born again, Jesus came today to move you from darkness into light. Not just that, so that he can give you his power. So that when you get up and there is an issue, you can use his name and use his power. If you are not born again, you can't touch raw power. 
The only power you can ever touch in this life is satanic power. And that power is destructive. So the first group of people that need rescue are those who have not given their lives to Christ, number one. Or people who have at some point given their lives to Christ, but they have fallen back. They are not serious. They are not committed to God and all of that. You are the number one person that needs deliverance and rescue. I'll give you the second one. If you are living in what I call uncontrollable sin, you can't help yourself. Some people, they call it compulsive lying. Or whatever it is. You can't help yourself. I watch a lot of crime uh, TV, and you know, some people, they'll say, I couldn't help myself. I just killed him. I couldn't help myself. You are what is called uncontrollable sin. You are sinning about something. You don't like it over and over and over and over again. Let me put it this way. You know how they say serial killer? Some people are serial liars. Some people are serial adulterers. Some people are serial fornicators. Whatever. Uncontrollable sin. You need rescue. Number three. If you have any type of addiction to drugs, to pornography, to masturbation, to whatever, you need rescue. You can never stop it unless you are rescued by the power of God. And that's available tonight. That's why you're going to expose yourself to raw power. Number four, there are people that work hard, very hard. Nothing to show for it. I usually call it, you walk like an elephant, but eat like an ant. You need rescue. The powers of darkness are playing games with your destiny. Another sign is nothing good comes your way without struggle. Number one is that nothing good ever comes your way. But the few that have come your way, you have to struggle. If you notice, you are always denied your right. You are supposed to pass. Then that year, I met a lady who spent nine years in school. What was the problem? In fact, she came to meet me because she had stayed about nine years in one particular position and they've not promoted her. So she began to tell me the history. She said even in school, while she was telling me about the job, she's been in one spot for nine years. She said she's not been promoted. And then she said when she was in university, she was in university for nine years. I said, is it that you failed your course? She said, no. When she got to final year, after she had finished final year exam, she went for clearance. Then they told her, they can't find your name on the list. She was like, I don't understand, but I've done year one, year two, year three, year five. They said, yes, but your name is not on the admission list. They said, your name was among those centers when they wrote JAM. JAM, if, you don't, if, you, if, you, if you're watching online, I don't know Nigeria. JAM is an exam you need to take before you enter university. So they told her that the people that took JAM that year, in the particular center she wrote the exam, that they disqualified their results, and that they had sent message to all of them to rewrite JAM. She didn't get the message. So she has stayed in school for four years. At the end of four years, she has even finished her final year exam. They said, according to the laws of Nigeria, you are not even qualified to be investing in the first place. So she cried, she was sad, she tried her best. Then she left the school and there was nothing she could do. So she had to apply for JAM. And this time, she failed four times. So meaning four years already gone. Then she kept failing four times, making eight. That the ninth year, she prayed and fasted and prayed and fasted and prayed and fasted. She finally passed. Then she got into school. And she finally graduated. If you calculate all these years, more than half of her life was spent in school. And then she now finally graduates, gets a job, and then she says another nine years. By then, we're talking about 50 years. Nothing accomplished. That's how many people are. You look at the past 20 years. You can't put your hand on what you've accomplished. You have not moved forward. You look at your mates. They've gone far. You have not moved forward. You are stagnant. And you don't want to tell yourself the truth. You need rescue. You are the type of person the Bible says you are under the power of darkness. And these things are real. Do you know why Jesus said we need power? Because we are not here alone. There's a Holy Ghost. There are angels. But they are not the, one, the only ones that are here. They are demonic entities. And they harass people. And they make sure that people don't move ahead. That's why Jesus said, you need raw power. You need to be able to get up and challenge whatever force comes against you. But if you don't, number one, give your life to Christ, 
Even if you call the name of Jesus, it won't work because you're not his child. And then there are people who are God's children, but they don't know that they are God's children. And so Satan keeps harassing them. And so the Bible says they need rescue. Number three, there are people who have sickness and disease. You need rescue. You are here. You have a sickness. You have cancer. You have diabetes. You have whatever condition it is, a bone condition. You need rescue. Let me read the scripture there. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. The other ones, I'll just run through them. I won't bother reading scripture because of time. Like I said today, it's not about too much talk. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with what? Power. Can we read the first two lines together? You now know how to read it, right? You now know how to read it. Can we read the first two lines together? One, two, three, go. I can't hear you. How God did what? With what? Can we say it again, the last line? How God anointed Jesus with Holy Ghost and what? With what? With Holy Ghost and what? Raw power. That's what they anointed Jesus with. Why did they release raw power on Jesus? The next line. He said he went about, number one, doing good. And doing what? Healing all that were oppressed of the enemy. That's in 38. He went about healing all that were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. So the Bible tells us there that sickness is an oppression of the devil. That means you need rescue. If you have any form of sickness that the man that has a, a tra- I think you're not able to swallow properly. Something in your, tr- your neck, um, not neck, what's that? Your throat region has a problem. So you're not able to swallow properly. You need rescue. Let's look at Luke chapter 13 verse 10. I like this one. Luke chapter 13 verse 10. This is what the Bible is showing us what happens in the unseen realm. We're going to read verse 10 and we're going to read verse 11. He said, this is he, there is Jesus. He was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath day. Verse 11. And behold, there was a woman who had the spirit of infirmity for how long? 18 years. Let's look at the NLT translation. He saw a woman who had been crippled by what? Crippled by what? Crippled by what? But you know what? It's because we're reading it in the Bible. If we're not reading it in the Bible, we see somebody that is crippled. What are we going to say? He has a bone condition. If you go to the doctor, they'll tell you he has, you know, they know how to call all these big, big names. They'll tell you he has paralysis of the lungs and it's because the chest region is perforated and so air cannot enter and so the bones are crumbling and it's called malatosis of the pathological of the vein of the kidney of the artery. Isn't that what they'll say? But the Bible tells us different. He said Jesus saw a woman crippled by an evil spirit. Kenny Hagin was talking one time. I don't know if you know about Kenny Hagin, but even if you don't know him, just he's a minister of the gospel. One day, people came out to be prayed for. They were sick. He said, as he was praying for the people, his eyes opened. Jesus opened his eyes, and he saw a man who had cancer. And he looked at the man, and he saw something that looked like a monkey attached to the man's um, side, a small monkey. Just picture a small monkey. And the thing fasting very tight on the man. He asked the man, what's wrong with you? The man said, I have cancer. But can he could see that that cancer was because there's an evil spirit that attached himself to the body. That's what Jesus saw here. He said, an evil spirit attached. So, can he looked at the evil spirit and said, you foul spirit. Let him go now in the name of Jesus. He said, lose him. He said, the evil spirit fell on the floor and said, I don't want to go. Ken Hagin said, you have to go. He said, I know I have to go if you say so, but I don't want to go. So people could hear Ken Hagin, but they couldn't hear the evil spirit because he was operating under a gift called descendant spirit. So the evil spirit said, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. Ken Hagin said, you have to go. The evil spirit said, if you insist I should go, I will go, but I don't want to go. Ken Hagin said, I insist, lose him, go now in the name of Jesus. And the evil spirit ran out of the place. 
Immediately he did that. Remember, the man could not see who Ken Hagee was talking to. Immediately he did that. The man lifted his hand and said, I feel free. I feel light. And that was how cancer disappeared. What was crippling the man in the spirit realm? There is an evil spirit in oppression. What did the doctor see? The doctor saw that he had cancer. They saw a cell multiply faster than usual. But in the realm of the spirit, there's an evil spirit in operation. Listen, if you came in here with cancer, hmm, you're the number one person that will get healed. Especially if they've told you it is stage four. If you came in here with cancer of any sort, you'll be the number one person that will receive the healing touch of God. Because those things are evil spirits. And we are going to release what on it? Raw power. What are we going to release on evil spirits tonight? What are the evil spirits going to experience tonight? Raw power. Hey, no, but they can't resist it. Where do they want to start from? Another sign is when you are sick, you go to the hospital, the doctors can't find what is wrong with you. They've checked and checked and checked. They can't find anything wrong with you. Or sometimes when they don't want to seem funny, they'll tell you it's one disease. Tomorrow you come again, they'll tell you it's another disease. Next tomorrow, they'll tell you it's another one. It's because they can't find what is wrong. You know why? Evil spirits cannot be seen under a microscope. So when you go to the hospital, they'll tell you you have headache. Next tomorrow, they'll tell you you have fever. You don't have any of those things. The Bible says you are harassed by an evil spirit. Another sign, dreams. You see all sorts of strange things in the night. You have all kinds of dreams. Someone is chasing you. Someone is pressing you. Someone is sleeping with you in the night. You are flying. All those strange things. It means you need rescue. Every time you're a woman, you see your period in the night or whatever, or you get pregnant and you keep having all this abortion that the hospital cannot explain. No, there's a problem. There's a problem. But that problem will bow to raw power of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let me take a few more. What I usually, I call it unreachable advancement. Unreachable advancement. You know what it is? You'll be seeing the advancement in front of you, but you can't reach it. Some people call it near success syndrome. I like calling it unreachable advancement. You see this, uh, this flower pot. You want to go near it. The closer you get to it, it's moving away. The closer you get, you're moving away. Near success syndrome. You need rescue. Let me pull a few more. If you have been involved in fetish practices, you've gone to native doctors at one time or the other, you need rescue. Those things will come after you. Another sign is that you notice a repetitive problem in your family. Is it your grandfather? Is it your father? You look around. You are not the only one experiencing that thing. You need rescue. Another sign that you need rescue is you have a problem that repeats itself at a particular season. Maybe every August it comes, or every two years it comes, or every three years it comes. That particular problem keeps coming over and over again. You need rescue. There are so many of them. Torments of the mind. You are hearing voices. You need help. Barrenness of any sort. You need help. Controversy. There is always one controversy in your life or the other. Is it that one thing or the other, you need help? Unexplained affliction. Too much hardship. Uh -uh, no, you need problem. You are working hard, but the hardship is too much. You need rescue. Let me give you another one. Most people don't know they need rescue. It's called repetitive invisibility. What does that mean? People don't notice you. They don't notice you at all. You are always forgotten. They don't notice you. You can be somewhere and it looks to you as if they didn't notice you were there. They'll count people. When it's time to do something good, they won't remember you. They always leave your name out. They'll say, oh, it's true. This particular person, no, there's a problem. Oh, you need rescue. When you're always forgotten, when you're always the last to be remembered, you need rescue. And you notice that that thing has been happening over and over again. No, you need help. It's called repetitive invisibility. 
you are always passed over. Stunted spiritual growth. You need help. Your spiritual growth is stunted. You need help. Your financial life is stunted. You need help. You are not advancing. Then some people suffer all kinds of setback. You need help. There are some people that hate a particular sin. They hate it. But they can't help themselves. They keep going back. They keep going back. They keep going back. They will cry. God, I don't want to do this again. No, it's beyond crying. God, I don't want to do this again. You need to be rescued. You need to be delivered. You need the power of God to break you out of that situation. That is not how God planned life. There are so many of them. I have a list of them. But you need rescue. When you know inside of you, all is not well. Sometimes, if the realm of the spirit is kind, you'll notice in your dream, strange things occurring. Those strange things are a sign you need help. And your condition is worse if you are not saved, if you are not born again. But tonight, Jesus has come to rescue everyone that needs to be rescued. He has come to break and open the prison gates so that men are set free, so they can fly, so they can sail. Because you can't continue like this forever. There is a great destiny waiting for you, but you can't assess it unless you are set free. Hallelujah. I'll tell you something. The greatest advantage Satan has he has one advantage, only one, not two. That advantage is not his power. No, it's not his power at all. The advantage Satan has is, I usually like to count the words, is an eight-letter word. Okay, not a nine-letter word, only one. Who knows what it is? It begins with I-G-N. It's called ignorance. That's the advantage Satan has, ignorance. Satan's advantage is not his power. Satan's advantage is our own ignorance. When we are ignorant of the fact that Jesus has transferred power to men, then Satan takes advantage of your ignorance. When we are ignorant of the fact that Satan has been defeated, then Satan takes advantage of that ignorance. But today... In the name of Jesus, your eyes are open. Whatever condition that you have, whether it's a sickness, whether it's a disease, whether it's an oppression, let me make bold to tell you that that thing has already been defeated. But let me tell you something. When we begin to pray, the raw power of God will act on that particular situation. If you came in here with a fiber, it will dissolve in the name of Jesus. If you came in here with an eye condition where one eye is slightly bulging out, is a little bit bigger than you. I can't see you physically, but I can see you. I saw like a flash, a person you have two eyes physically like that. But one eye is slightly bigger than the other. And because that eye has a problem. I, I can't tell what the problem is, but that particular eye has a problem. Tonight, Jesus is going to touch that eye and give you a brand new eye in the name of Jesus. As a matter of fact, if there's any part of your body that is broken, you know, in heaven, there's a storehouse of heaven. The Bible tells us there's a storehouse. Let me tell you, there are many things in that storehouse. One of the things in that storehouse one of it, of course, the weaponry of God. The Bible tells us that God has a weapon house. But that's not the only thing that is there. Inside the storehouse of God, you know some of the things that are there? There are body parts. There are brand new eyes inside the strip, inside that room. There are brand new legs. There are brand new kidneys. There are brand new tummy. Any part of your body that needs replacement, right? When we allow raw power to come into oppression, it will travel to the storehouse. Get to the gatekeeper of the storehouse, Jesus Christ. We're going to use the name of Jesus. They will open the storehouse and demand for new eyes. And they'll come and they'll fix it for you. If it is your leg, maybe you don't like your leg. One leg is longer than the other. And tonight you're saying, Lord, I want brand new legs. It's very simple. They go all the way to the storehouse and they bring a brand new leg. Maybe it's a kidney condition. Maybe you have kidney failure. 
We are not going to ask them to repair that kidney that is bad. No, we don't want to repair. You know what we want tonight? We want what? Brand new one. Maybe you're not able to breathe properly. You are struggling with your chest. You can't breathe. You can't breathe. No problem. We're going to go to the storehouse. We're going to make demand tonight of a brand new lung. There are so many. You know, like even in the natural, when they uh, do cars, they always have spare parts. So in God's storehouse, there are what? Spare parts. If your brain is not functioning properly, hmm, you reason, but you can tell something is off. You need a brand new brain. Do you know they can replace your brain? Who needs a brand new brain? Uh, so many people need brand new brain. <laughs> Do you need a brand new brain? Who needs a brand new brain? You notice you have memory loss. You have memory loss. You can't remember things very quickly. Oh, they're about to change your brain right now. They're about to change your brain right now. Don't think that that condition is normal. They're about to change your brain. Is ignorance that is disturbing us? Not that the devil is powerful. It is just simple ignorance. Let me show you something. Have you ever felt, I'm going to round up now so that the Holy Ghost can act. Have you ever felt that the promises of God are not real in your life? You look at your life, you look at the Bible, you see the promise of God, especially if you're a Christian already. You see the promise of God, and it looks as if what God said is not coming to pass. I'm about to tell you why. And if you're like that, how many people are like that tonight in the house? You see something, and you look at your life, it's not like that. Let me show you, you are not alone. Let me show you, it happened to Moses, Exodus chapter 5. I think this will be the second and last scripture I'll read, and then the Holy Ghost is going to move. Amen. Are you ready for raw power? Are you ready for the move of the Spirit? Are you ready for Jesus to act on your situation? Are you ready to be delivered? Are you ready to be set free? Are you ready to be rescued from any situation? You know what will act on you? It is the power of the Holy Spirit. Remember, that's what I showed you. Whatever Jesus has, there's one that distributes it. His name is the Holy Spirit. Even if you're online, raw power is going to come on it. That is what Moses used to face Egypt. But let's look at what happened to Moses. Exodus chapter 5, we'll read 22 and 23, and then we'll look at God's answer in Exodus chapter 6, verse 1. But let's start from Exodus 5, 22. Throughout the time of Jesus Christ, when he walked on this earth, there is not one time, when they were praying, they mentioned it, there is not one time, except when Jesus went to his hometown, and I'm going to explain, so that that doesn't happen to you. Any time Jesus came in contact with a problem, that problem bowed to the name of Jesus. Whether it's death, there are people that died. When they came in contact with the raw power that Jesus was carrying, that situation bowed. Whether it was deafness, whatever it is, when he came in contact with the raw power of God, that situation bowed. It's only one time the situation did not bow. That is in Mark chapter 6. Why didn't he bow? The Bible said the people did not have faith in the raw power that Jesus was carrying. And so Jesus could not help them. Jesus could not help them. But tonight, if there is anybody here that has a condition, it doesn't matter how old or how long that condition has been, when it comes in contact with the power in the name of Jesus, what is that power called? What is that power called? Let me tell you something. There is a song they used to sing. They stopped singing it now, and I understand why they stopped singing it. But that's what they are trying to say. You know that song? Jesus power, super power. Jesus power. Can you call it raw power? Je Jesus power, raw power. Jesus power, raw power. Then they'll put the flip side. They will say, Mommy, water power, use power. They are trying to show you that there is raw power. 
and there is useless power. There is raw power, the one that comes from on high. The one that Jesus said, wait until raw power comes. He said that one is undiluted. That one comes from heaven. That one defeated all other powers. If it were not so, why did the devil, like Pastor Fred would say, why did the devil allow Jesus to rise from the dead? Why did he allow Jesus to rise? If his power was anything serious, he would have kept Jesus in the grave. He would have kept Jesus in the grave. But he couldn't keep Jesus in the grave. Why? Jesus had the raw power. Raw power means what? Real power. He had it. There was nothing the devil could do. If he could not keep Jesus in the grave, he cannot keep you sick. If he could not keep Jesus in the grave, he cannot keep you bound and afflicted. If he could not keep Jesus in the grave, he cannot keep you from getting saved tonight. So they'll sing that song. He said, Jesus power, raw power. Jesus power. Uh -huh. I can see those of you that did crusade in 1960, clapping like that. I did not say you should clap like that, too. Wait. Stop clapping. I didn't say you should clap like that. I said, let them sing. You know, the way you are clapping tells me you used to be in crusade in those days. But you, how many of you know the song? What they were saying is, there is a real power. And there's a fake one. Tonight, every fake power will bow. Sickness, oppression, that has helped both you and your family, it bows to the real power. That song says, Do you know what is raw power? Let's even define this raw power. What, can I, what is raw power? It means the real one. It means the super one. It means the undiluted one. It, was, it means the one that comes from heaven. It means the one that can never be defeated. It means the one that is with Jesus. Every other power, the Bible says, Jesus is going to rescue you. I know why they stop singing this song. They say that you are calling Mami Water name in, the, in Crusade Ground. But the Bible tells me in Colossians 1.13 that he has rescued us from the powers of mommy water, whatever they call it. Hallelujah. But at least let's sing the Jesus part. Hallelujah. Jesus' power is raw power. And we're going to see it in operation tonight. If you are sick in the house, get ready. And then in more modern times, they sang a song. We only sing it twice and then we'll see that. They say power, power, power. Power, power, power. Power, power, power. Belongs to Jesus. Hey. Belongs to Jesus. Say power, power. sing it. It is a declaration. It is a declaration of faith that power belongs to who? Jesus. That power belongs to who? That healing belongs to who? That deliverance belongs to who? That every other power is fake. And it's going to be disgraced tonight. Did you see what the Bible says? It said an evil spirit that crippled the woman 
Sickness is an evil spirit. Today, if it is on your body, it's about to go. If you have been stagnated for years, whatever has held you back, tonight that power is going to be broken. But let's see what happened to Jesus. Let's sing one more time. Then I read what happened to Moses, and then we're going to allow God to move. Power, power, power. I want it to enter your mind. Let it enter your spirit. to Jesus healing power belongs to Jesus the power to save belongs to Jesus the power to deliver belongs to Jesus if you come with a bone condition this is a good time to stretch forth your legs and receive your healing if you come with any bone condition we're going to read Exodus 5 22 and wrap this up Exodus 5.22, Moses went back to the Lord, maybe this is you, and protested, why have you brought all this trouble on your people, Lord? Why did you send me? 23, ever since I went to Pharaoh, as your spokesman, he has been very brutal to your people, and you have not done anything Let's look at the NIV translation of that. Ever since I went to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has brought trouble upon these people. You have not rescued your people at all. What Moses was saying is, you said you would do this, and yet you have not done it. Maybe that is you. You looked at the Bible. You see the promise of God. You look at yourself. That promise is not shown in your life. You have even prayed about it. And that problem has not shifted. You have even fasted. That problem has not shifted. If you are like that, you are not alone. It happened to Moses. So Moses went back to God and said, What you said you will do, you have not done. God gave a response. Which is the last scripture we're going to read today. Exodus chapter 6 verse 1. That's the next. Um, if you just flip the next chapter. I wish we had TLB translation. But if we not, NLT is good. Then the Lord said to Moses. Do you by any chance. Okay, we will read NLT. Do you by any chance have either easy translation. 
or CEV. If you don't, let's just, just read this one. Then the Lord told Moses, now you will see what I will do to Pharaoh. When he feels the force of my strong hand, if you read it in easy translation, he says, when he sees my strong power, some translations say, Pharaoh will not go until he sees raw power in operation. There's only one thing opposition responds to. It's not phony. There's only one thing opposition responds to. It is not plenty preaching. There's only one thing opposition responds to. It is not complain. There's only one thing it responds to. It responds to raw power. That is what God was telling Moses. He said, you are going to see when he feels the force of my strong hand. Another way for force of my strong hand is saying, when he sees raw power. Is there anything in your life opposing the word of God? You go, guess what God said? He said, you are going to see raw power. It will come in contact with that situation and to melt it in the name of Jesus. Is there any opposition? So what Jesus is telling us that when you see something in his word and you believe it in the word of God, allow my power to act on it and then you are going to see a change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who is ready for Jesus to act on your life, on your destiny, on your situation, on your ear, on any of your organ? Who is ready for all power to touch him? The Bible says Jesus is exalted above every situation, above every name, above every power. The Bible says, above all principalities and powers. As the master of Colossians 2.10 tells us that he is ahead of all principalities and powers. Everything that has plagued your life is about to bow in the name of Jesus Christ. Is about to bow in the name of Jesus Christ. And then some people are going to live here because the power of God is going to come upon them in an unusual way. Not just for healing and for deliverance, but something will be activated in you tonight. Something will be activated in you tonight. Some unusual boldness will come upon them. Some unusual power will come upon them to heal the sick. God will activate the healing power that is already in you. Some God will activate all kinds of gifts of the spirit to begin to work in your life. Because Jesus told us, whenever the Holy Ghost comes on a man, that man does not remain the same. He doesn't. In fact, when he was talking to us, he said, men are going to begin to prophesy. Men are going to begin to see visions. They are going to begin to see dreams. Some are going to get healed. Some are going to get delivered. But the bottom line, the Bible says, there are men and women tonight that need to be rescued. And they are the first group of people we are going to deal with today. If you are not born again, you are not a child of God, we can't even get to step two and not talk of step three if we don't first of all help you out of this situation. So if you are in the audience, whether you're on the left, on the right, wherever you are in the auditorium, and you do not have a relationship with Jesus, you are the number one person that Jesus came here to help. You are the number one person that Jesus came here to deliver. You are the number one person that Jesus came here to rescue. While you are sitting there, before I even tell you to lift your hand, you're going to hear two voices. One will say, you need Jesus. The other will say, don't mind him. Sit down. Don't go down. That second voice is the voice of the devil trying to rob you of so much. The first voice is the voice of a friend. Is a voice of the one that has come here today to help you. One of them is telling you, you need to stop your bad ways. You need to give Jesus a try. You need to come to Jesus. You need to start afresh. That is what one voice is telling you. But the other one is arguing with the other voice. He said, don't mind them. Don't come out. Don't worry. Do it next time. You can't come out today. Do it next time. Which voice will win the argument? 
The choice is yours. Can we bow our heads and pray and talk to God? Can we bow our heads and talk to God? Wherever you are, you need rescue, you need help. And even if you're online, maybe your father forced you to watch the program, or your mother forced you to watch the program, or your friend is playing the program in the living room, and you just happen to be there watching, and you are not born again, you're also the one I'm talking about. But if you're in the auditorium today, and you are not saved, you have not given your life to Jesus, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand so that we can pray with you, pray for you. But it's not just a prayer. It is rescuing you from the powers that have held you. Because in the next few minutes, we're going to be praying for the sick. In the next few minutes, we're going to be praying for anybody that has any of these conditions that I have mentioned. But if you are not born again, we are wasting our time if we are trying to pray for you to be rescued from Satan. The first rescue is rescue, first of all, your spirit man from the hands of darkness. After we have done that, then you are now free for us to be able to engage the raw power of God to break whatever has held you for years. So if you're like that, you are not saved, you are not born again. Right just where you are sitting, just lift your hands to Jesus. He can see you.